Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Wednesday Bible study. My name is Marvin D. Cherry, and I am the senior pastor here at Hightown Church. Uh, so delighted and thankful that you've chosen to join us uh, and to study with us on today. I hope and pray that all is well with you. Uh, I hope and pray that you know uh, that this is the day that the Lord has made, and so uh, you and I and all of us should rejoice and be glad in it. God is so good to us. God is still good to us. God is still so good to us. Uh, no matter what may be going on around us. And so for that, we're so thankful. Uh, we'll, be, be, we'll be starting or beginning a four-part ser series entitled uh, The Blessing. The Blessing, a four-part teaching series entitled The Blessing. Now, we'll take our text from the book of Psalms, in fact, the very first division of the Psalms, and we'll study verses 1 through 3. And that's what we'll be for the rest of uh, the month for the rest of the month, God willing, amen, and I'm excited about that, amen, I am excited about that. So if you'll go with me now to your, uh, in your Bible, Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3, again, this is what we'll be studying. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we thank the Lord for the reading of his word. And again, we're excited about this title. Uh, we're excited about our study entitled uh, The Blessing. And that's without an S. We thank God for the blessings uh, that he bestows upon us. But we're going to be talking about and studying uh, the blessing, the blessing of God. Amen. So that's what we'll be. Before we begin our study, I ask that you join me in a brief word of prayer. Let's just give thanks to God for all things, for all things that he does for us. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you for giving to us another opportunity uh, to study your word. Father, I thank you for those who have uh, joined us uh, on, on, via the internet and as, as we stream even. We bless you for that. I pray, Father, that uh, you would touch hearts and minds. I pray, dear God, that you would give to each of us a peace that surpasses all understanding. And I pray, Father, that uh, you would remind us uh, that even in a day and a time like this, that, that, that the kingdom is yours and, uh, and that you rule the nation, the nations, and we thank you for that. And that includes our nation. And we thank you for being God and for being Lord of all. We bless you. We magnify you. We thank you for the wisdom and the insight that you shall give to us uh, through and by your Holy Spirit as we study your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Again, uh, we begin a month-long study, Bible study, entitled or titled uh, The Blessing, The Blessing. Not just a blessing, but the blessing. Not just a blessing, but rather uh, the blessing. Now, a blessing, and let's give some, some definitions, if you will. A blessing opens up the window of heaven into a particular uh, uh, area of our lives, but the blessing, the blessing from God, it affects every area and every aspect of our lives. You know, from time to time, we all experience blessings in our lives, and we say that, don't we? Yeah, that was a blessing, and I, I received a blessing, and certainly nothing wrong with that, and that is a blessing to be able to, uh, to receive blessings, but I believe that God wants us to experience the blessing the blessing, the blessing, so that we can live in his fullness uh, at all times. Wouldn't it be a blessing for us to be able to declare that in our lives there's nothing missing, there's nothing broken, and there's nothing lacking? If we're not living in the blessing, and we all should be, uh, we have the right to, we have the privilege to, if we're not living in the blessing, then we should understand this, and that is we're living beneath our God 
God-given right and privilege to do so. You know, God called and created us uh, to what? To live in the blessing, to live the blessing, to be blessed, to be a blessing. Amen. And, 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 and that's what we should aim to do, and that should be our intention. We want to receive the blessing of God, and then we want to live in the blessing and walk the blessing out each and every day of our lives. Now, so what is the blessing? What is the blessing? Let me give you a definition. Uh, and In fact, the, the very first word of our, our, our text is blessed, and that's as far as we'll get today as far as uh, Psalms 1, 1 through 3, just that first word, blessed, blessed. Uh, here's a definition of the word blessing uh, that we'll be talking about and studying for the next four weeks. Uh, the blessing is the supernatural spiritual empowerment from God that causes the believer to experience favor and good success in every area of life. Let me read that again. The blessing is the supernatural spiritual empowerment that comes from God that causes every child of God, every believer, to experience uh, uh, the, the favor, God's favor and God's goodness in and over every area of their lives. You know what God does? God specializes in blessing us. He specializes in blessing his people, uh, and that means us. He does. He, he loves to bless us. It gives him joy uh, to bless us uh, and to cause us to uh, be happy. Our Heavenly Father surrounds us with his infinite goodness, his infinite gifts, and his infinite grace. This should be the ongoing environment and atmosphere of those of us who are, who are truly following Christ. In other words, uh, there should be a ble uh, the blessing of God, the favor of God, God's goodness and his grace should be a part of wherever we are. It should be uh, almost, uh, if you will, a natural part of our lives and our living. In fact, we should be stacked and packed with the blessing of God stacked and packed with the blessing of God. But how do we get it? How do we receive? How do we receive the blessing of God? One word, Jesus. One word, Jesus. One word, Jesus. Look at Galatians, the third chapter and verse 14. Listen, I believe that now more than ever, we need to realize who we are in Christ Jesus. If there, were, if there was ever a time in our lives that we really need to pay close attention to the word of God, that we really make sure that we are rooted and grounded in the word of God and that we know that our citizenship is in the kingdom of God. That time and that hour is now. That time and that hour is now to not only know who you are, but to know where you are. Uh, and I'm not talking about geographically now, but to know that you're in the kingdom of God. And when you're in the kingdom of God, that means that God assumes the responsibility of taking good care of you. Now, God's always done that. That is, he's always taken real good care, excuse me, of his children. Look at Galatians 3 and 14. Galatians 3 and 14 says this, that the blessing of Abraham, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through uh, through Jesus Christ, that we might what receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Glory to God, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentile, uh, the Gentiles. Christ Jesus, Christ, the Lord's sacrifice on the cross, uh, amen, provided for each and every one of us who would believe that he is the Son of God. It puts us, it positions us to receive God's blessing. Amen. And that is the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of God provided to us, uh, to the New Testament saints, uh, via the blood of Jesus Christ. We've been redeemed. You know, the Bible says that we've been redeemed from what? From the curse of the law. But we must also understand and realize that we have not just been redeemed, uh, but we've been redeemed from something to something. We've been, been redeemed from the curse of the law, but we've been redeemed to something. And the church said, amen. We've been redeemed into the blessing of God. God. We have been redeemed into the blessing of God, uh, and every uh, promise uh, that, 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 that God spoke to Abraham, every promise that is made in the Bible, God has also spoken to that to us. Now, I know everybody won't believe that, and there'll be some doubters.
dollars, and there'll be some people who want to challenge that. But you know what? I'm not. You know, we, we won't. We're not in the business of challenging anything. I'm just going to believe that. I'm just going to believe that the that the, the blessings of Abraham uh, have the blessing of Abraham has come on me and on my life because of Jesus Christ and through my relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm just going to believe it. I'm going to put my faith and my confidence in Jesus Christ. I'm going to look to the hills from whence cometh my help, and I'm going to know and realize and believe until my dying days, all of my strength comes from the God above, the God of heaven, and the church said amen. Glory to God. So Jesus Christ provided what the blessing for us, uh, us New Testament saints. You know, uh, the Bible says, uh, uh, the Bible says that the, the, the blessing really, it's ours. It belongs to us. This, the, the blessing that we talk about, uh, it, it really belongs to us. And every now and then we ought to just say it. You know what? It's mine. Uh, my two and a half year old son by the name of uh, Micah Elliott. Cherry Esquire, amen. Uh, he's got this new saying that he learned. It's been about two and a half months now uh, since he, he began saying it. But he just got, he's gotten to the place to where it's mine. It's mine. I think I may have shared this a couple of weeks ago, but that he, everything belongs to him. It's mine. It's mine. It is mine. That's what Micah says. Two and a half years old. Amen. It's mine. Everything is mine. Amen. Every book and every magazine is his. Amen. Every phone and every electronic device is his. Every bowl, every plate, every cup, every straw is now his. Amen. That's what he says all the time. He says, it's mine, and he really means it, and he'll just fight you for it. You know, he, he just won't let go. It's mine. It's mine. He grabbed my cell phone the other day, uh, and he wanted to see one of the wanted to see something on his phone, and and the first thing he said, it's mine, it's mine. I said, no, brother, no, man, it's not yours, this is mine. Now, he ended up getting it because I gave it to him, but that still didn't make it mine. Here's what I'm trying to say. Uh, Micah, at age two and a half years old, uh, claims everything as he is. Everything is his. Now, listen, if he can do that in most of what he claims, we end up giving it to him because if not, he'll scream and holler. But, uh, but I think that the body of Christ, uh, you and I, I think that as people of God, uh, we should have the same attitude. Uh, we should fix our mouths to say the same thing. It's mine, especially the blessing of God. The blessing of God, it's mine. It's mine. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what's going on. It doesn't matter how bleak and bad things may. The blessing of God is mine. We should go on to say that the promises of God, each and every one of them, they're mine. They belong to me. Glory to God from the from the mouths of babes. Children can teach us so much sometimes if we'll if we'll just listen and if we'll just pay attention. Listen, over the next four weeks, we'll take a good look at the kind of person that God wants to bless. Are you the kind of person that God wants to bless? Are you the kind of person that God can bless? Uh, are you the kind of person that will receive God's blessing? And that's what we're going to be talking about again for the next four weeks. For the next four weeks, I'm so excited about it. Uh, everybody can't receive or will not receive uh, God's blessing, but that doesn't have to be you. Listen to me today. It Do doesn't have to be you. In the middle of a plan pandemic, you can be blessed. In the middle of layoffs uh, and hard times, you can be blessed. You can receive the blessing of God, and you can declare out of your own own mouth in 2020, the, uh, the 11th month uh, uh, of the year, you know what? I sense, I feel, and I am enjoying the blessing of God, which is on my life. Tune out the negative, tune out all of the stuff, concentrate and focus on the kingdom of God and focus on the blessing of God. Because you know what? The blessing of God is yours. In fact, go ahead and say it like Micah. Say it like Micah. Say, it's mine. Yeah, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine and it's yours. And you know what? We don't have to pay for it. We don't have to lie to get it. We don't have to cheat for it. We don't have to steal it. Amen. God offers it to us. Us freely. He says, my blessing I'm giving to you. That is my favor, my goodwill, my grace, my goodness, my gifts. I bequeath them. I give them to you. I want to give them to you. Uh, I, I want to give them to you. I want to bless you with everything that's mine and everything that's uh, 
anything, you know, it belongs to the Lord. Amen. We, un we should understand this, and we know it, and we don't have to flip the pages of the Bible too far. In fact, pretty much everywhere you go in the Bible, you see where God is blessing, where it's, in, it's God's will to bless people and especially to bless his people. In fact, throughout, again, the pages of the Bible, we read where God has this, this, this desire, this overwhelming desire and willingness to bless his people. Remember this now. Remember that the blessing comes uh, to us through, by, and because of Jesus Christ. It comes to us through Jesus Christ. And so the first thing that we've got to make sure of is that we're in a relationship that puts us that positions us to receive the blessings of God, that we are in a real relationship with God. And I'm not talking about being a part of somebody's church or uh, ha having a, uh, you know, a church affiliation or church denomination. We're all connected uh, uh, to some church or some church affiliation in some way or another. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about church uh, affiliation or or or. Uh, uh, church affiliation or denominational affiliation now. What I'm talking about uh, is being acquainted through a relationship, being acquainted with Jesus Christ through a relationship with him. That is, you've given him your heart. You've asked him to forgive you of your sins. That is to say, you know what? I belong to Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I've been bought with the price. I'm no longer my own. I belong to him. And you see, that positions you. It positions us. And let me tell you, again, if ever there was a time we need to be in the right position to receive the blessing of God and to benefit from the blessing of God it's right now listen uh, right now you know right now uh, in our country uh, uh, um, it's, we're still trying to figure out who's going to lead our country for the next four years amen vote night was on last night uh, or yesterday and last night and so the counters are still counting the tabulators are still tabulating trying to find out uh, who uh, who's going to lead our country for the next four years uh, and so we don't have to be overly concerned with that uh, why because at the end of the day as a believer your resident is the kingdom of God. You live in the kingdom of God. You are a Christian first and an American second. What that means for you is that God is going to take care of you. If you'll rely upon him, if you'll keep your faith and your hope and trust in him, then God's going to take care of you. No man will ever do what he's supposed to do all the time. You know, folks just are just folk. And so we don't put our faith in folks, but we put our faith and our trust in the living God. Amen. Uh, a friend of mine was telling me this morning, he said, I haven't been to bed yet. I said, I, said, I dozed off about 930 and I did wake up about 233 this morning uh, and saw that the results uh, uh, had not been finalized, that they're still counting vote, votes and, and the like. And But you know what? Uh, yeah, I'm just not going to worry about it. You know, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I hope that the person that I voted for wins the election. But if not, you know what? Well, we're still going to be all right. I'm going to pray for the person, whoever, whoever wins. And I'm going to pray that the Lord will give them his mind and his heart uh, uh, and, and that they'll uh, be righteous leaders. Amen. Uh, and that's about as much as we can do uh, with that. But see, we're in the kingdom of God. And so as we study uh, over the next four weeks, uh, you're going to see. Uh, how you can be blessed and, and, and why you're blessed, not because you're a Democrat or a Republican, not because you live in a red state or a blue state, not because you voted for this person. You're going to see that you're blessed because you are affiliated and associated with the living God. That not only do you trust him, but you also obey him. Not only do you say that you know him, but you also find yourself uh, obedient to his teachings. And you know what always follows obedience blessings the blessings of the Lord will always uh, come on those who are obedient to God praise the Lord so uh, just to set the stage for our study, uh, and again, we won't go any further than uh, with, with, our main, with, our, uh, with our main verse, our, our main scripture reference, which again is Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Uh, we looked at that first word, bless. I just wanted to give you the implications, uh, the implication and implications of what it means to be blessed, the kind of blessing that we're talking and teaching about and certainly we'll be teaching about over the next uh, four weeks. Um, 
I want to share with you just a few verses from the Bible. And again, these verses will help set the stage. Uh, They'll help to remind you and to show you that God is very interested in blessing you that God is very interested in blessing you. So maybe four or five verses that I'll read, and then we'll bring our study for a close uh, on on today. And then, God willing, next Wednesday we'll, 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 we'll dive head into and we'll begin to deal with the kind of person that God uh, wants to bless, the kind of person uh, that takes advantage and receives the blessing of God. Amen? So uh, look at Psalms 23, uh, Psalms 23, oh Lord, and if we didn't look at anything else, if we didn't study anything else, we'd be all right. This is just uh, one of those hallmark hallmark scriptures, one of the ones that uh, so many of our favorites. Uh, This is is my favorite scripture of all time, but Psalms 23 says this, the Lord is my shepherd, and what I want to show you is God's willingness and desire to bless you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me, excuse me, beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Everything that you just read is part of the blessing. It's just part of the blessing. You've got a shepherd who goes with you and walks with you in, uh, through life. He, 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 you know, he fixes it where you can rest because, you know, so much in life can be so overwhelming and so daunting sometimes. And so the Lord says, listen, I'm your shepherd and I'm with you. I want you to just lay down. I want you to rest. I, wanna, I, want, I want you to just enjoy life. I want you to go with the flow. When you get tired and when uh, life gets hard, I want you to know that I'm going to be the one that will restore you and refresh you. I'm going to lead you along the paths of righteousness and the paths of plenty and the paths of goodness. And I'm going to do it for my my name's sake. Verses four through five says this. uh, He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Here again, that's part of the blessing. That's part of the blessing. You know, sometimes I think we, we pay way too much attention to our enemies. Sometimes we give our enemies too much consideration. And I think if we would just begin to uh, focus more on the blesser, uh, the, the God who blesses us, we'd spend less time on our enemies and we'll begin to realize that we're blessed and God is for us and not against us. He says, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're not walking alone. Why? Because I'm going to be with you. I'm going to with you. And you don't have to ever worry or fear about evil. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to comfort you. And I'm going to bless you in the very presence of your enemies. I'm going to bless you in the presence of your enemies. I'm going to bless you when you think you don't need to to, to even deserve to be blessing. Bless. I'm going to bless you just because you belong to me. And that's that's part of the blessing. Uh, Look at that last uh, last verse, Psalm 23 and 6. The psalmist says, surely goodness and mercy, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And, you know, David is not just talking about being at church, you know, 24-7 around the clock and 365 days out of the year. But I think what he's talking about is something so much greater than that. I think he's literally talking or also talking about the presence of God. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will be forever in the presence of the Lord. And you know what? When I'm in the presence of the Lord, that makes me blessed. When I'm in fellowship with God, I'm blessed. When I am obedient to God, that positions me to receive the blessings, the ongoing, the continuation of God's blessing. And the church said, amen. Praise God. All of this is part of the blessing. Uh, The Bible says, go with me now, look at John 10 and 10. And this is a verse that we know so well, uh, but I think it's so important that maybe we just even commit it to memory and then say it every now and then. John 10 and 10, what does it say? It says, the thief cometh only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It says, but I, Jesus said, I have come that they might have life, may have life and have it to the full, that they may have life and have it more abundantly. You know what that means? That That's part of the blessing. God says, I want you to have and enjoy and to know abundant life. 
God says, I don't want you to just have life, but I want you to have it and enjoy it. I don't want you just living. The Lord says, I want you to really live life. And I want to bless you so that you can enjoy life, so that you can enjoy life. Now, we know why the enemy comes. We know why the devil comes. We we know what Satan's up to. Amen. We know that. But the Lord is up to something, too. The Lord is up to something as well. And he's up to blessing us. He's up to uh, showering, showering us with his gift, with his, with his gifts, and with his grace. Amen. And even with his glory. And the church said amen. Here's a, another verse that we should understand. All of this is what? It's all part of the blessing. It's all part of the blessing. Ephesians 1 and 4. Ephesians 1 and 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us, what? with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. There is so much in Christ. There is so much that we have in, inside Christ Jesus. Uh, so much love, so many benefits, so many gifts. Amen. All in Christ Jesus. And, and so we've been blessed in heavenly places. And so what we have to do is just come on up. We've just got to rise on up, rise above the natural, rise above what our eyes can see and know and realize that we've been blessed by the blesser, that we've been blessed by the hand of God because of our relationship and our love for his son, Jesus Christ. It's part of the blessing, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's part of the blessing. Look at 2 Peter. 2 Peter uh, uh, chapter 1 and verse 3 says this, according as his divine power hath given, I love this verse, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. You know what that says to me? That's part of what? That's part of the blessing. That is part of the blessing. He's given to us what? Not some things or most things. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the apostle makes it clear that God has given to us. He has bequeathed unto us everything that we need for uh, for 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 God for godliness, everything that pertains to life, everything that we need in the spiritual realm, in the natural realm, He's given it to us through the blessing, through His blessing. I am blessed. And not only am I blessed, but you're blessed as well. And you've just got to realize it. You've got to remember. Don't allow yourself to get frustrated. Don't allow the enemy to make you think that you're not blessed. You know, we won't always have things going our way. Things won't always be hunky dory, as they say. But you're still blessed. And there may be some times that you may wonder and worry. Sometimes that you may even have to cry. Uh, but listen, when you get finished with those few uh, tears, you remember that you're blessed. Why? Because you're connected to God through his son, Jesus Christ. You are connected to the living God through his son, Jesus Christ. You know, I think it's time for us to get back to that, to get back to Jesus and to get back to God. And there's a, you know, there's a, there can be, if we're not careful, there can be a lot of entertainment and there can be a lot of flesh. And there can, but we've got to get back to God. We've got to get back to God and the son of God. And we've got to get back to the spirit of God, the one, uh, the ones who bless us, the ones who have sent the blessing. Uh, the Bible says he has given us everything that we need to obtain and to maintain uh, the blessing. And this comes to us through uh, Jesus Christ. Look at 2 Peter uh, look at uh, verse 4 whereby we are given whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that by these ye might be what partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in uh, the world through lust and, and here's what I get out of that you know the, the Lord has given uh, given to us great and precious promises you know he's made all of these promises to us uh, and sometimes that we, we forego the promises sometimes we never receive the promises we never lay hold of the promises because we're not in the right position. And it's not that the Lord has not given the promises. It's not that the Lord has not provided or made a way for that which he has promised. Yeah, God is always going to do his part. And whenever, you know, there's lacking, whenever uh, there's a problem, you know, it's always us. It's always on us and it's always on our end. 
And and so what we've got to do is we've got to make sure that we're positioned, that we're in the right position to what to receive the promises. The pro and you know and, and and when we're in the right right position, the Lord says, "I'm the blesser. I want to bless you. You don't have to." do anything underhanded. You don't have to do anything immoral. You don't have to lie. You don't have to cheat. You don't have to uh, forsake who you are. Uh, I'm going to bless you. In fact, Jesus said that if we would just do this, if we would just seek first and really seek first the kingdom of God, if we would seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that is God's way of living, God's way of doing, uh, and God's way of being, he says, then all these other things, I'll add them unto you. He says, I'll give them to you. What other people are struggling and straining and fighting over and fighting for, the Lord says, I'll give it to you because I know, that I know what you have need of uh, before you even have need of it. And so God has promised to bless us. He ha he, he's offering us his blessing, not to the body of Christ, the world, too, if they'll turn to Jesus, but to the body of Christ. See, that's why we don't have to worry about what's going on. That's why we really and truly don't have to be worried about uh, whether this one's elected or whether that one's elected. We all have our choices, but at the at the end of the day, there ain't but one real choice, and that's Jesus. There's, there's not but one real party, and that's the kingdom of God, right? Uh, and so, you know, we put our trust. You know, we know that God gives men and women to govern over us, to, to lead us and to guide us. Uh, but at the end of the day, Jesus Christ is still King of kings, and he's still Lord of lords. And so we put our faith and trust in him above all. Above all, above party, above uh, party affiliation, above any man or woman, we put our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, God has blessed us, uh, and I believe that it is his will uh, that, that we continue to receive the blessings, that we continue to live in a state of blessedness, if you will. Amen. Next week, we're going to talk about, uh, in a little bit more detail, the person that God blesses. Uh, to whom will God trust the blessing with? Let me tell you, you can be blessed. You can, in fact, you are already blessed, and you know it. You're blessed. And we're going to talk about how we can walk in the blessing, make sure that we've received the blessing of God. Amen. And then, when, when, listen, once we get locked in there, nothing else really will matter. Pray with me as we, uh, as we bring our, our study to a close. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you for this time that you've given to us to share your word. We thank you, dear God, that we've taken your word and hid it in our hearts that we would not sin against it. Not only that, dear God, help us to be uh, not just hearers of your word, but to be doers of your word as well. Help us to believe what we've read, to believe what we've heard, uh, and, and to stand on your promises. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for the empowerment. We thank you, dear God, uh, for making a way for us to receive your grace and your goodness and your gift. Thank you for favoring us. Amen. And surely we don't deserve it. But for some reason or another, you keep on blessing us over and over and over and over again. Father, help us if we've been unrighteous, if we've been mean, if we've been ugly in any kind of way, if we've been anything or done anything or said anything that's not like you, dear God. We ask for your forgiveness right now. May we be purged and cleansed uh, through and by the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you again for every participant, every person that uh, study with us today. And we thank you for laying the groundwork for the rest of this study uh, on next week. We love you. We bless you. And we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, this is going to bring our study to a close. I do hope and pray that you'll join us excuse me, that you will join us on uh, next Wednesday as we continue this uh, study titled uh, The Blessing. Uh, before next Wednesday, we've got Sunday, God willing, and we'll be here uh, for 11 o'clock worship and 8 o'clock worship, and we're still doing Sunday, stu Sunday school via Zoom. We thank God for you, and God bless you, and may God keep you, and may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in your hearts from this day until evermore. Amen. <laughs>